Hey there, my name is Keith Groover, and I'm the inventor and designer of the Glide. This is video three in a tutorial series. Um, today I'm going to talk about MIDI and synthesizers and connectivity. Um, this is just a very, very brief survey. I'm not an expert by any means, um, so uh, please keep your expectations low. <laughs> Let's talk about um, how to connect your Glide to something other than just the headphone jack. Um, my preferred method is Bluetooth. Um, it's MIDI BLE, which is, stands for uh, Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, this barely uses the battery. You can just have your Glide be free and clear, don't have to be connected to any wires, and you can use um, a good number of synth apps. Um, iOS has uh, the best support for all of these synth apps. Um, I, I actually um, did not have an iPhone and I didn't want to buy an iPhone, so I actually got a <laughs> an iPod off of eBay um, for, I think it was a hundred bucks. It was used and it works beautifully with all of the apps that, that I'm gonna show you today. Um, so uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money in order to get something that works well. Um, all right, so the way that you're going to connect over Bluetooth is you're actually gonna hold down the joystick button that's right, you know, right next to the joystick, and then power it on, and you'll see that just two, like just one of the lights is on, and now the other two have come on, and now it's in this holding pattern. It's going to wait to connect. So the app that I'm going to use today is the Moog um, Mini Moog Model D, which is free and it's flexible. It's super cool. I like it a lot. I think it's my favorite app to use right now. Um, lots of little knobs to tweak and stuff. Um, so I'm, I've got that up and I'm going to hit the little gear icon that is in the top right up there. And then once I do that, if you go down to the MIDI menu, as you see on the left, um, click that and then on the bottom right, there's something that says Bluetooth MIDI. So click that. and you'll get a screen that looks something like this. Um, you see right there it says glide prototype number 4B, I think, uh, and not connected. Yours is going to say the glide and the number of your actual device. So I'm gonna click that, I'm gonna be connected to that, click done. And then hopefully I'm connected. All right, in order to actually get it to work well, uh, you have to change the, the pitch bend range. So you're gonna go back to that same little gear thing and then on the left-hand side of the menu, go to advanced and you'll see there is, uh, on the right-hand side it says modulation and below that it says pitch range and you can set that pitch range to a couple of different um, possibilities. Um, I use uh, 48. That's kind of the, the perfect pitch range for the, for the glide. Um, and now um, I've got to turn on those options. So I'm going to do hold down one, two, and three on the, the traffic light, hit the function button. So now you're all set up to actually play with um, with you know, all of the features. Uh, in order to get volume to work, um, the instrument uses its CC message uh, number 11, which is expression. And on this app, if you, again, if you go back up to that little gear, and then you go to MIDI, and then you go to uh, map CCs, um, it gives you a little it gives you a little chart of the synth that looks like this. And from here, you can map um, that onto whichever sound you want, um, whichever knobs you want. Uh, as you see, I've got it set so that the three volume knobs that are in the middle, um, they're all set to 11. And then I've got the contour knob on the right. I've got it set to 74. 
which is connected to the brightness mode, which you can turn on with this button and then the function button. Uh, it's, eh, I haven't, I haven't set it up too much, but you can kind of get some interesting sounds. I generally, yeah, I generally end up mapping uh, a lot of the tone stuff to the volume, also like using eleven. Um, just it's a personal preference. Um, okay, and then at that point, really, you're you're good to go. Like you've got. You got all the sounds that you need. Um, and all of that is over Bluetooth. Uh, you can do the same thing over uh, USB. Um, I have a little USB cable here, and there's a USB connector on the bottom. Um, with, with iOS, it depends on the device. You might have to play around with it or, or Google it a little bit to see how to best hook up USB MIDI. Um, you might have to use something like uh, the little camera connector kit. Um, and you might actually have to use something like a little USB hub. Uh, you know, I got this little cheap one for $10. Uh, Apple tends to not want uh, you to connect your devices straight into one of their smaller devices. Uh, connecting over Android is actually a lot easier with USB MIDI. Um, you can get a little, uh, a little adapter that can, that will take you from will take you from the larger USB into whatever it is that your phone uses, like USB-C or USB, you know, micro USB. Um, or you can hook it up in, straight into a computer. And again, in order to, like, with the different computer configurations, you're probably gonna have to do some Googling. Just Google for USB MIDI uh, and then PC or Mac. Um, uh, you can also, by using, um, there are adapters out there where you can connect a keyboard to a MIDI, USB MIDI device. Um, unfortunately, you can't really connect it straight into the device. What you have to do is use um, a bridge or, or a MIDI hub. You can actually use, again, use the little, um, the iPod. Uh, if you get something like this app, which is called, which is called MIDI Mitter, you can map uh, USB MIDI um, signals around and you can go from the glide into uh, the iPod into something like an old school keyboard like I've got sitting right here. Um, so there are lots of different options. As far as synth apps go, um, again, I just got a cheap iPod off of eBay and then I just found a bunch of free apps and tried them out with all of them. If they can do at least a 12 half step uh, bend, like if you can set your pitch bend range to at least 12, then it'll work. Um, some of the synth apps don't support um, mapping or they don't support uh, expression. Uh, you can tell that they're designed just to use the on, on screen keyboard, um, but a lot of them do. Uh, uh, the free ones that I've tried out, uh, Synclavier Pocket is a good one. It's got kind of a weird interface because it's recreating the old school Synclavier. Um, InTrack is one that I used for a long time that uh, that works really well. Um, it's really a DAW. It's a digital audio workstation, but um, it has a, a really nice built-in synth. Um, like I said, the Mini Moog Model D, uh, I just downloaded it last week and I love it. I think it's super cool. Um, the Audio Kit, they have something called Synth One. Um, all of those are free and they're all pretty easy to use. Uh, if you want to pay some money, um, there are a whole bunch of synth apps out there that work really well. I, I really like GeoShred. Um, it's, a, it's a legit instrument just by itself, but it does work really well with, with um, USB MIDI and with Bluetooth MIDI. Um, and it has just a ton of features that you can turn on or off. Um, it's it's a, a great little program. Um, and I think that is about it. So like I said, um, I know I'm not doing a real deep dive into this stuff, but uh, there are a million different little variables and you can just you know kind of play around for years with it. And uh, I'm sure we all will. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and let me know if you have any questions and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you and see you next time.